Hey, thanks for watching or listening. Just to give you guys an idea, this episode is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be diving into website design and SEO and everything in between, how those things work together, best practices, what you should be looking for. So the interview is with Matt Arnold over web design and creative at hip and James Cook, who is over SEO. And it's just a candid conversation. So enjoy. Thanks for watching and listening. Hey everyone, today we're gonna be diving into some web design questions and I have Matt here who helps lead that whole process. Yeah, and I have James here who leads the SEO process because web and SEO work hand in hand. So we're gonna ask each other questions about each other's field of expertise and I think we're gonna have some fun today talking about how HIP does web and SEO. So Matt, when it comes to HIP website design, what really makes us different? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, what I love about HIP is we're so much more relational than transactional. So we do a very thorough intake process with our partners because if we can get as much upfront as possible and get to know them, get to know what they like, what their preferences are, what area they're in geographically, who's around them, um, if we can just get all of that information up front, it makes the process so much smoother and more aligned with their brand. So what really sets us apart is that we are going in and just excavating as much as we can as if it were just, you know, something underground that we had to find because the partner's busy, right? So, um, you know, partners, our partners are orthodontists and dentists and they have jobs to do, right? That's why they, they pay us to, to do marketing. And, and so when we do that thorough process up front and we get to know the partner, not just for data or for cities and zip codes, which is great, but we actually get to know their brand and their voice and their tone, we can then translate that into a website that offers a personal customized experience like Nelson right here, uh, a great example where he said, you know, uh, you know, I'm different. I'm a dad. I like to make jokes. I have a lot of really um, uh, fun things that I say, and I'm, I'm kind of nerdy and I have a YouTube channel. And so I'm not going to treat him like I would maybe some other orthodontist who's a little more clinical or serious or, you know, wants to put a lot of data on his site. So we look at all of that at a 360 perspective when it comes to a partner because it really matters. You know, that experience that you get online, knowing that the website is your global door, front door to your practice, it matters because if I go to a website and I go, man, I want to go see Nelson, that looks amazing. And I get there and it looks nothing like what the website portrays, there's incongruence and I lose trust. And every relationship and, and foundation is built on trust. And so if that's the case, I'm going to make sure that at the very beginning, we get that relationship established and it's solid so that we know exactly how to represent the partner best. Yes. And also when it comes to web design, why is it so important to have web design with specific intent and specific components and elements built in? Yeah, it's funny. A lot of people just think, you know, you throw a website together and, you know, it's a templated, you know, thing and you just copy and paste. And the reason why we have to be so intentional with design is because design is more than just what looks pretty. You know, a lot of people think, well, I want my website to look cool, but that's just one component. What they're really saying is I want my website to look like me. You know, I want my website to look like us, whether it's cool or trendy or we're in Beverly Hills or we're, you know, in South Florida. What they're just saying is I want the website to represent us. And so with everything that we do as far as laying the buttons out and laying the navigation out and laying out uh, different photos, that is actually designed too. You know, a, a car can look really great, but if it doesn't go anywhere, it's nothing. It's not, it's worthless, right? So a website, uh, and we'll get into SEO a little later, but a website without SEO, we always say is like a parked car. Well, a website without great user layout and experience is is a really a, not a functional website. It's not serving the partner very well. So wherever those buttons are, are uh, placed on the site, they matter because people have to know where to click quickly. We want our sites to convert fast. And to do that, that is actually part of the design. And that's why we have to be uh, so intentional with where everything is. So let's jump into that a little bit. So as far as a beautiful design and great branding, what are some of the things on the site that just 
make us stand out? Like, what is it that we're doing to actually show growth? Because at the end of the day, I think that is what is really important when it comes to a practice. Yeah, that's a great question because our sites don't just look great. They don't function, just function well. They're also integrated into our software, which is Practice Beacon. And it's a lead management app where... You know, it's funny, we, we heard practices that used to use paper or, you know, Excel spreadsheets to track leads and to figure out, like, who do I need to follow up with today? And so we developed this software because we saw a gap where practices didn't know what to do with the, the leads and the patients and uh, didn't know how to follow up. And so we actually integrate our websites with forms directly from our software onto the site. So people don't know they're inside of Practice Beacon, but they're actually typing their info into a Practice Beacon form, and then that information is going directly in to Practice Beacon. So let me just show you an example. If we were to go to in-office consult right here, which is a free consult for Nelson Family Orthodontics, I would scroll down. There's a nice photo up there, really attractive photo. And then I go to this form that only requires me to fill out four fields. It just wants my name, phone number, and email. I mean, anybody can fill that out. So it's quick, right? We don't want to ask them a ton of questions. We don't want to bog them down. So that's the first thing. We want to quickly convert them. Well, there's also some info on the left side here that shows them where the location is, the hours. We just want that to always be visible, right? So once they fill all this out, let's just say I did that right now. Well, I would then be able to head over to a thank you page to acknowledge that that you know, the practice received it. And then here's what's really cool. You go right into Practice Beacon and that would show up as a contact. Let's just say this card right here was right here under requested appointment. It would go right into the column where I need it to be. And right there, I can follow up with the lead by clicking the box and it shows me a conversation. It shows me all the automated messages that go out, the text that go out that does it for you. And with some manual follow-up, boom, you have, you know, a person that's already in your pipeline they're hot, they're ready, they're, they're, they want to get in and they want to start that appointment. And you just saw me walk you through that in, in about a minute. You just got to lead through a website because not only was that button very easy to find at the top here, it's, it's a nice, you know, clear to call to action color. But if I were to show you another site, for example, this is one in a totally different market, Beverly Hills. So we're talking about, again, a customized experience for the partner where uh, Dr. Madden said, hey, I'm in a different area. Like you guys over there, you know, in Florida, you know, that's a different, different location. And we're like, absolutely. So how can we make this customized to you? And how can we bring you the right type of patients that will, of course, convert? So her button, we chose this pink color and it's across her site, pink. And so that is a very user experience intentional design so that people know as they scroll down, they're going to be able to see everything that's pink as a call to action. So let's go to her uh, form. Well, hers is a little different. We use calendars for hers, but they're still very easy to use. And so they're done by location, right? And so all I have to do is click the day and time that works for me. And I can click submit. And there's, again, another very simple form for them to fill out. And this is actually right here, that account, it would go into requested appointment. And so that's, that's another, again, differentiator is that um, we're able to customize it for the partner, whether they want a calendar or a form. But again, whatever method they choose, it's quick and the patient can get right in and use our software, which, you know, a lot of marketing companies can do marketing. You know, a lot of companies can get paid and provide, you know, results. Uh, but again, we're talking transaction. And if we really bring it into relationship, what are we providing here with Practice Beacon? We're providing relationships that the practice can make with these patients because they're nurturing them through what we call the patient journey from start to finish. They're not just a number. They're a person that has a conversation. They're a person that has text and email and phone calls, and they're all logged right here. And they're coming directly from our websites. So I would say pretty much what's really separating hip web design from the norm is not just a beautiful design and capturing the brand and putting it in their voice like you mentioned, but let's touch on the topic of really some of the additional elements like the payment calculator, some of the things that we add to the design and how that actually all works. Yeah, so 
That's a great question because the payment calculator is one of those things that that does separate us from other marketing companies. And really, the main reason we have it is because we want people to say yes easily. You know, we we have some ebooks out there about how how to convert, you know, patients in the TC room, how to get you know people to say yes. Um, and so what we say is, well, maybe somebody's not really ready to commit to a free consult right then. They're like, well, they're going to get my info and probably, you know, call me and text me and, and all that. And so the payment calculator is a way to reduce the, the barrier to kind of break down the wall so people can go, oh, that's kind of cool. Let me click payment calculator to see what this is about. Because I kind of want to know what orthodontics costs. I mean, it's one of those things where I don't really know. And and here I am, and I'm on the site, and I'm ready, but maybe I'm not quite ready to schedule, you know, with somebody right now, but here we go. There's a quick form that says, fill out just a few pieces of info. Tell me what you you are. You're a parent. Let's just say I'm a parent. I actually am a parent looking for orthodontic treatment. I got some kids, and here's where there's a fork in the road that allows people to go, oh, so I don't have to commit right now, so they can say yes if they want, but We give them an option to say no, which I think is a differentiating factor because who wants to put no on the form? Who wants to to allow people to say no? Well, here's why that matters. Once they say no and they click and then they go to calculate, that's actually going to send all of that information directly to the practice, but they don't have access to the calculator yet. So they have to give the information to the practice before they can get access, but it's still low barrier because... Once they get to this next form right here, they do not have to click submit. All they have to do is just use this calculator to find out an example of what the values could be if I put in a down payment. Let's say I have 300 down, which is their suggested minimum. All right, well, let's put 300. You can see it calculating in real time what's happening. Let's say I don't have any insurance at all. I just want to find out what it would be, but I want to go to 36 months. Well, it looks like my payment could be one fifty eight thirty three a month. Now, it doesn't mean I can take it to the bank and go to Dr. Bad and say, your calculator said that because we have disclaimers and we have ways to talk through that because, it, of course, it depends on complexity of case and whether it's surgical or you need more work. But what this does is allow me right here without having to commit and say submit because I could click submit and that would just add those values to the contact record but the practice has already received the information. And so they're submitting and opting in, but I didn't have to say, yes, I want a free consult. So that allows the practice to reach out to the person and say, hey, I saw you were using our payment calculator online. That's awesome. How can I help make treatment affordable for you? Now, if I approached you, James, with that, would you be less threatened with that than me going, hey, would you like to start today? Obviously, yeah. Right. The first question being, would you like to start today? That's a little more threatening. So now I have a lead into the conversation as a relational uh, component to gain more equity with that person than it is just, hey, let's get started right now. Hey, I want to see how we can help make treatment affordable for you and your family. Let's talk about it. Well, yeah, I'd love to talk about that. And then I bet you nine times out of 10, that turns into somebody going, yeah, let's let's get a free consult. Let, it's you know, doesn't cost me anything. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's amazing. So touching on the parts of beautiful design, having specific elements in there for conversion optimization, a way to track it through practice beacons so we know that it's actually performing. And I think one of the most important things that really separates HIP is communication, right? And I I just want you to kind of go through what is it like, the whole web process for our partners? Yeah. So like I said earlier, we do a thorough intake process where we have a, a spreadsheet that they fill out. It's very detailed, but it's so efficient because once we get all that information for the rest of the 90 days, we're not having to reach out to the partner very much to get much information because we get it all up front. If anything, we're only reaching out for any kind of photos that we might need because obviously that makes a website come to life. Um, But when you look at these sites, you can see that there's a lot of customization to them. So we do have to really, like I said earlier, dig deep into what makes the partner different. So, for example, uh, I mentioned earlier about Dr. Nelson saying, hey, look, I'm a dad. I love dad jokes. How can you incorporate some, you know, cool language in in the website to represent who I am as as an orthodontist? Because I want that to come across. So our communication process is, well, give me some buzzwords that you guys say, or give me some dad jokes. And thankfully, I'm a dad myself. 
myself, so I kind of, you know, maybe have that come naturally. Uh, we're both dads. We're, you know, you, uh, you got the dad joke game coming on, you know. <laughs> But uh, as I look at that and I scroll down this page, you know, I'm going to say, hey, we're different than your typical orthodontist. We're not your typical orthodontist. Well, why? Well, let's, let's keep scrolling. So we scroll down. Um, this guy's got a YouTube channel. So you can see this right here says, we've got the creds and use the best. I mean, who uses that kind of language? Well, you know, people that probably grew up in the 90s, you know. And so we've got this guy here who, who uh, makes fun of his gray hair. And, you know, but yet he loves serving smiles because he's like, man, I'm not just... I'm not just treating patients. He's like, I, I love serving a confident smile. And I'm like, man, well, let's, let's use that line. Like Chick-fil-A loves serving chicken sandwiches um, and nobody else says my pleasure at a, at a fast food chain, right? So let's separate ourselves from the rest. Um, and then right here, everyone loves uh, or deserves to love their smile. Well, that's a different line I don't hear every day. And then we come down to some, some dad joke stuff where, you know, we just say basically... Um, the, the, they have a really good, uh, you know, uh, well, let's say this way, they have an amazing space. So we said, you'll love our sweet space. Well, they're in a suite. I mean, come on, that's totally dad joke material, right? Like who's saying that? And then this is his daughter. So it's like the proof is in the smiling, right? Proof is in the pudding. So that's just a play on words of how we were able to customize it for him. But our process is 90 days. And so it's, it's longer than usually our ads are. You know, those are 21 days, a lot quicker. So this project is a longer term project. And so when it comes to communication, we are communicating throughout every milestone of the project. There's six to seven phases of every web project. But we don't bog the partner down with having to know every detail of every part of that. We just update them on when we're heading to the next phase. And what some people say and some friends and other agencies that I've talked to, when they hear our process, they go, hold on. So you do a thorough intake process, and then what happens next is I send a recap email after a discovery call. We have a 60 to 90-minute call with the partner. I go through the web process. I show them different websites. I get design feedback. I get a style guide approved with colors and fonts on that call. I get a site map approved, which is the structure of the entire site. And then, James, we send a recap email. And then the next thing they get is a month later, a homepage designed to review. And we don't actually show them anything else unless requested until two weeks out from launch, which there's a good gap in between there if you're doing your math right. So two weeks out from launch, we show them a final site review for about 30 minutes. And that's the first time they've seen the entire site in action like you're seeing right here. And some people would call that crazy. But what I would say is it keeps our partners doing what they know they can do best, which keeps us doing what we do best. And some people say, yeah, but bring them into every step of the process. And I would say, I would challenge that because that doesn't mean that you're not serving the partner well. You have to ask the question, what is really serving the partner well? Is it taking their time or is it giving their time back so that they can focus on being the orthodontist? And if they truly trust us, for the entire process and they know that we're the experts and up front we we show them the results and we show them how many partners we've worked with across the country from beverly hills to new york to florida to rural areas in amarillo texas then they trust us and say okay you guys got this run with it and nine times out of ten james they're approving their homepage designs within 48 hours of seeing them and so from there, we take the rest of the website and we're off to the races. So I just, I love that because we don't want to bug the partners. We want to include them in the process and they absolutely are a part of it, but we're not wasting their time. We're, we're really looking at intentional touch points of when they need to be involved. And I think they appreciate that. And that has to come from a framework of expertise that was built, right? Like how many sites in the dental and ortho space have been through HIP's process. Yeah, wow. I mean, we're talking over 200, I mean, 250. Um, you know, I've been here a few years, and just in that time frame, we're talking 150 sites probably, and yeah. we're slated to launch 80 this year. So it's, uh, it's crazy. And, you know, I think back three years ago, we were launching, you know, one site a month maybe. And so the growth has been incredible, but we've learned a lot in the process. So when it comes to framework, I mean, I can show you another, you know, uh, screen here where it shows Figma, which is what we lay everything out in. And going back to process and intentionality, I mean, you're seeing a finished website in the one screen, but here's where all the page layouts are. So we are going through every single, you know, detail when it comes to this process to make sure it 
everything aligns correctly. All the wording is correct. It represents the partner. I mean, these aren't templated sites. Yeah, there's a framework and there are certain things that are in similar places when you look at our sites, but there's a tried and true framework that's been proven over the course of years and hundreds of websites. And so when you show that to a partner, I mean, the proof is in the smiling and <laughs> the proof is in the pudding, right? <laughs> like going back to Dr. Nelson, he would appreciate that. So you think about that. And I, I think about another practice elevation orthodontics in Nashville. Um, you know, they are uh, very unique and they serve adults only. And some people would say, oh, that's crazy. But I mean, again, we're talking, everybody's a little bit different. So when we're serving partners like that, he was like, man, I want a very unique site. I'm very much um, into details and design. And so when I get on a call with somebody like that, it doesn't intimidate me, it excites me. Because then I know that he really cares and that we're gonna be able to create something really out of the box that's not just your typical ortho site. And we're now having more orthodontists come to us and say, Matt, I don't want a typical orthodontic site. Like, I don't even want to look like an orthodontist, you know? And there are people in Denver, there are people in, you know, other places, New York, who are challenging the process and saying, I don't want to look like the typical orthodontist. I want to look like I can relate to people because I don't know about you, but, you know, and, and we've had conversations about this before, but like, I want to go to a doctor or places where I feel welcomed, where I feel like they care about me and they're maybe even a little like me, you know, so that I can relate to the doctor and not feel like I'm going to a doctor appointment. And so many orthodontists and dentists these, day go, these days go, yeah, I, I want people to come in and feel at home because the dentist and orthodontist can sometimes feel like this overwhelming experience and it's really not. Yeah, I think what comes to mind too is a veil has that feel too, really a custom, just different type of feel that is really represents the brand well, but just has such, it's one, it's one of my favorite designs, but just has something special about it, right? Yeah, I agree. Avell, that's a great uh, site to bring up, actually. I love Dr. Larson and his team. Um, and this was one of those where he said, look, we're going, he even said this, we're going spa-like, you know, and he gave me this, uh, you know, there in Arizona. So he gave me this site as a reference and it was from a resort. <laughs> and so he's like, I want it to look just like this. And so he's like, I want textures. I want, you know, all my patient photos and every photo on this site, James, is a patient photo. So I would absolutely say that's another important component is to always get patient photos. It's not hard to do. You get their approval and you snap a shot, you know, or you schedule a session afterwards. Hey, what's a, what's a quick photo session for a patient? And then they have memories for the rest of their life of the smile that they remember having, but then they're reminded of it every time they walk by this photo shoot they had. And then not only are you using it for them, you're then u- utilizing it for every bit of marketing you do um, because they look so much better than stock photos, right? I mean, you can tell a stock photo. And here's Dr. Larson and his family, and obviously they're they're very photogenic, but he's somebody who gets it, right? He's like, man, create this site that doesn't look like an orthodontist site. I mean, I, I kind of feel like I'm on a hotel site right now. Like, I want to book a room, you know? Yeah. Like, I want to I want to come here and and travel. And so when I look at this site and the textures, the design, the layout, this was very intentional. And he has another practice as well that looks different. So it's like we didn't just cookie cutter this to look exactly the same. And here's the internal, you know, the interior side of that. He had certain elements he wanted to come across. And so I'll scroll down to the bottom real quick. Uh, But you come down here to patient reviews, and these are all streaming in, and that's another differentiating factor, five-star only right here, and then come down to the bottom. And again, just talking about how we can really capture a practice's personality. Uh, What's fun about this one is we got to create the brand for this. So this logo was actually created by HIP. And so we got to have start to finish uh, see the results. And I think that's really special because you get to see the whole journey of their marketing. And now he's a partner for life. You know, Dr. Larson is a raving fan and we're a raving fan of his. So Matt, just like with SEO, I know there's some partners that we have to do some custom campaigns for, right? They might be in New York City or in these big populations, a competitive area, and they might want specific things done. How does that relate when it comes to design? Give us an example of what we actually do for a partner, not only to build their brand and their voice, but an example of exactly what we do step by step and what makes it different. 
Yeah, I instantly think of Beverly Hills Orthodontics. Um, I was excited about this when Dr. Madden came on because, you know, she really is the original Beverly Hills orthodontics. It's, it's copyrighted. It's one of those things where, um, you know, Beverly Hills is a very different market. Um, obviously, as we know, everybody knows Beverly Hills, uh, Rodeo Drive and, you know, the celebrities. And so we're talking like, you know, possibly seeing, you know, celebrity um, patients and things like that. High profile, right? Well, it's not the same as if it's in a rural town or um, maybe in even Atlanta, Georgia in the southeast. So when Dr. Madden and I got on the call, she was very particular with how her design would be laid out. She said, I don't want to look like anyone else you've ever done. You know, so like, here's the mission. I don't want anyone else. And she's so, you know, she's cool. She's outgoing. She's very animated and she's very personable. And so she's like, I want my website to look, you know, like you've just opened this, you know, high profile magazine and you're just reading through it. And it, and it just looks like something that you just picked up off of, you know, out of a Beverly Hills, you know, magazine or something. You know, she just had all these, these great examples of how she wanted to be so unique because, they are in such a different market and they are tailoring to a certain profile uh, of, of client. And so as I scroll down this site, I'll just show you some different things that we did. Everything from the as seen in section here where they're, you know, seen in Marie Claire and the doctors in Allure. I mean, she's been on multiple, um, you know, news broadcasts and shows. And so she's like, you know, that I want that to be seen because in Beverly Hills, maybe that's not a big deal where, where, you know, another orthodontist might be, but that's a big deal where I am because that's important for my market to know I have credibility. And so not only that, but let's talk about what differentiates me from the competition. Well, not only are we in an area where, of course, yes, we have high profile clients, but we also want to serve everyone. So we also have affordable monthly payments, too. So we want to talk about how easy it is to get started. Um, and so then we come down to this section here where it showcases her team and we use specific um, headings here where we didn't just go with three line, three words. We said, get the confidence you need to make a brilliant first impression. So I'm, I'm custom tailoring that language to somebody who might be in their area. Like, I want to look my best. Everybody else is dressed to the nines. I want to as well, and I want to have a smile that's dressed to the nines. Everything from the beach atmosphere to the clean office environment she has, all the way down to this credibility here where she's uh, one of the partners we have that has the most uh, logos on her site like this because this just establishes her as an authority, an expert in her space. And so she wants people to come to her. So we did some very custom things here where we used some sentences uh, for the headings with actual period and punctuation at the end where normally we would do a title case heading with capital first letters. So we said, let's go more editorial here with magazine look, you know, meet your orthodontist. And so the layout here you can see is different in structure. We have this little stamp, you know, icon over here. And, and again, this, this font here is very different. It's not a normal font you would see on a website. And she showed me a few websites on our call, and it was, you know, different than orthodontists in general. And she just said, I really want this to, to have a lot of different uh, structures and layout. And you look at the buttons, and they're very simplistic. Um, and then you come down to this section right here with the black and white photos over color background. Again, another design aesthetic that you don't see a lot, but she really wanted um, to, to draw attention. And she was very particular about even the age and, and the style and, and the demographic and the, and the diversity, right? Because Beverly Hills is very diverse. So um, that has to be taken into consideration. And then I love this section because we did this very custom to where we went full width with all of these um, options for treatment to where it wasn't just in this staggered pattern. It was like, let's come up with ways to explain what we're about to show. So for Invisalign, we came up with these taglines, find a clear path for the best smile ever obviously playing on the word clear for Invisalign. That's not Invisalign's um, you know, tagline, but it was one of those things that we thought would represent Dr. Madden well and, and how she had a certain tone and voice that she wanted to put out there. So for braces, we came up with discover treatment that has stood the test of time. 
because braces has been around so long. So you can say that's a timeless treatment. So that was a tagline we came up with for that section with somebody right here that represents that. And there you go for SEO. There's your internal links right there doing their job. The next one is Embrace. We have a preferred partnership with Embrace and uh, they would be called hidden braces or, you know, um, lingual braces where they're hidden behind the teeth. And so we said, enhance your confidence without compromise through Embrace. So you don't have to compromise your smile. You don't have to have to you don't have to have braces. Um, you don't have to deal with Invisalign. You can have them behind the teeth. You don't even have to, you know, deal with any of those treatments if you want to go with something a little uh, less invasive, right? And so that was one option. And then the next one is keep your smile on the bright side with Zoom. So just coming up with ways to really hone in on that design, but you can see how that takes up the whole page. Your whole screen is covered up with an entire focus of the treatment because she said, I want each of these four things to be the highlight. So we don't do the same thing for every partner because not everybody offers Embrace. Not everybody wants Invisalign first. Maybe they want braces first. So we get that detail up front so we know exactly what we need to highlight for the partner so that the design of the site actually reinforces the brand. And then you come down to what looks like I'm about to sign up for a spa package, you know, and say, ready to transform your smile. Yeah, let's go. I'm ready. By that time, I'm like, man, where's the button? Let's go. And you can see where that pink comes in again, um, because it's so important to use the same color for those call to action. So just another way that we custom tailored the design experience for the partner, whether they're in New York City, Beverly Hills, or a rural town outside of Atlanta, or, you know, you know, Colorado or wherever they may be, Idaho. We have some partners in Idaho. We're going to do it different because they're in a different area. Hey, if you're an orthodontist listening to this podcast and wondering, how does this work for my practice? I actually have some ideas, but I also have some questions. Go ahead and click below in the description, book a discovery call with one of our practice advisors who can find out exactly where your practice is at now, where you want to be, and then create that bridge to get you there faster and easier. So if that interests you, go ahead and click that link in the description. Thanks so much for watching or listening to the Grow Ortho podcast. So James, why is SEO, search engine optimization, important? Yeah, I would say more than ever, it's probably one of the most important parts of a brand, especially a local brand. And I think a lot of people have the misconception of, hey, I'm not sure if I really need this, but I think securing your brand and positioning your brand in the search engines is one thing and your reputation, but also the power of really good SEO can drive a boatload of leads and growth to your business. So I would say, hands down, one of the most important marketing tactics to do for your local business, but it does have to be done a specific way and done right. We have unique sites at HIP. You know, of course, we've talked about design today. We've talked about layout. But when we talk about websites as a whole and you say things like, well, SEO is one of the most important marketing components you can do, that's a powerful statement. So, you know, when it comes to our HIP websites, um, you know, sometimes on calls with partners and, well, pretty much every time on calls with partners, I'll say a website can look great, but without SEO, it's like a parked car. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. So how would you say we power our sites with SEO and what what really differentiates us from other marketing companies? Yeah, it's a, a great question. And exactly, it would be like giving you the Ferrari frame right without the engine. And it, it definitely is like that. And I, I would say a beautiful design is definitely needed. But then there is components on the site for conversions and then other components like search engine optimization that drive the traffic to that site to help it convert. And what we do so different is just an advanced framework from on-page search engine optimization to off-page search engine optimization. And there's plenty of marketing companies that offer SEO. They will send a report on a monthly basis, right? But what I like to do is take the partner by the hand and really make them, number one, understand the effective side of search engine optimization, understand what we're actually doing, and then working on a way 
to actually show them the performance of SEO. And I think that is a key core thing. It's not just tracking keywords. That's great. That's that's one part of the story. But digging deeper in and seeing, okay, now how effective is our SEO campaign, right? And search intent keywords. It's one of the biggest things that I'm always talking about because many partners feel, oh, someone told me that I should be just blogging every month, right? We, that's a common thing we hear. I should just be putting all this content on my site. But if there's no goal, if we're, we're not very clear on the goal and very clear on understanding what is the overall process and goal of the site, right? And I think everyone would agree, well, it's to grow the business, right? We want potential patients to come in and we want to start them, right? And that's the goal. When we have that clarity, we understand to start building a formula and a process of, okay, well, I understand how people search because I've been through hundreds of orthodontic and dental websites, hundreds upon hundreds of orthodontic and dental Google business listings, and I'm able to see from data, okay, how are people finding these listings? And just for an example, it could be Invisalign near me, right? Terms like that. It's not really the big terms of how to brush my teeth better, right? Or what I should avoid eating with my braces because that's such on a national level, it doesn't draw the right search intent type of traffic that we want. So we have a framework that really relies on, let's take the partner site, let's build it with our framework, but also include the SEO framework that we know is more advanced from on page to off page, that's going to drive the right traffic to that site to convert them into patients and also be able to track that with practice beacon, right? That's a beautiful thing. So understanding what's going to be our game plan as far as driving that traffic organically, and then also really being there for the partner to serve them best at looking at campaigns and taking them by the, the hand and showing them, look, it's not just that we're tracking some keywords and sending you this report. We're actually showing you right here, live data. It's actually working. We're growing in traffic. We're also able to compare that in search analytics and search console and also practice speaking that it's actually working. There's an ROI. We're, we're here, we're growing. And, and even if we're at least generating leads, we can also help you understand how to nurture those leads and turn that organic traffic into more patients. That's awesome. So what you're saying is I can go onto a website and I can click free consult because maybe I saw it on Google, most likely because of yep. SEO. And I got to the website, I clicked free consult, it went into practice beacon, it says it's from the website, and there I go. It's most likely because of SEO and somebody found me on Google that they were able to get to my website through that avenue, through that page, and now you're in practice beacon. Yes. So the practice sees that ROI, they can say, wow, it came from the website and we can show real data that's transparent. And that's what you're saying would really differentiate us from maybe another company who can say, yeah, we got SEO going for you. You're growing, you have more page views, but maybe it's more on the vanity metrics side where vanity metrics, meaning, yeah, you got, you know, this many thousands of page views this month. And it's like, well, but how many people started treatment? Exactly. So with that said, SEO can kind of be this pie in the sky thing for some people, right? Because it's kind of like what I tell people sometimes now that everybody has an iPhone in their pocket, they claim to be a photographer. Same thing with SEO. Just because you're a marketing company doesn't mean that you're an SEO expert, right? And so SEO, and especially in the space that we're in today, some companies can claim they do SEO, but not provide that transparent reporting or results to their clients, kind of knowing that many people don't know much about it. And so how does HIP ensure that we bring tangible results to our partners? I mean, you use all kinds of different tools. Um, we've been on calls together with different partners explaining that. But what are just some things that you can say that we do to actually show this is what's working? Yeah, so the first thing is I'm always encouraging, hey, let's jump on a call together. I want all partners, I would love to be face-to-face -face with them, jump on a call, be able to share my screen. And yes, they get a monthly SEO report, but I, I like to go beyond that. Let's dive into the data like we mentioned. Let's look at, and our team is wonderful, at putting together reports of what was in practice beacon from the website. Let's look at that data together. What can we improve on? Let's look at the search performance campaigns. How many calls are we getting from Google Business? How many calls are we getting looking at uh, Google Analytics from the website? These are inbound calls. And we can even identify, even if it is working, and sometimes SEO is skyrocketing, it's bringing traffic, but there could be other issues 
right, that are underlying that we could discover through those calls. Oh, well, we see, okay, you had about 20 consultations booked but none of them converted, what's going on here, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's beyond SEO. It's really understanding, yes, we do want to focus on the basic SEO 101, keywords, traffic, but going beyond that and really taking our partners by the hand and showing them, hey, we're here to actually make this help your practice grow. Yeah, that's so good. And, you know, you grew up in New York, uh, Long Island, like New York City. And so when we think about that and comparing, like, because some partners could say, yeah, but that doesn't work in my area. And I've been on calls with you again where you have explained how we're able to differentiate areas, whereas you would do SEO differently in New York City as you would, let's say, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, right? So maybe go into a little bit about that. And then uh, I want to have another question about like auditing your own site as well. Yeah. So I think it comes back to the, f the first step is definitely city and city population plays a big difference, right? When it comes to SEO, there's really competitive cities like New York City, Manhattan, and then there could be like a small little city um, somewhere out in Colorado, somewhere that no one ever even heard of, right? So there's going to be a big difference when it comes to the SEO performance. There's also going to be a big difference when it comes to SEO tactics of what we're actually going to do for that partner. And it's all customized. That's the thing. It's not just a cookie cutter process where everyone's going to go through the same exact thing, because then we wouldn't be serving our partners at the highest level. Because I know in order to get you to rank for a term, very competitive term like orthodontist in New York City, there's specific things that we have to do on page that are advanced and then off page off-page SEO that's advanced. And a lot of that might be requiring what I call link building, which is just some um, term pretty much getting votes over to your site. That's why I like to look at it. And Google loves that. Search engines, they have an algorithm that's built. And if you feed them what they like, they reward you. You'll, you'll rank higher. But yes, there's things that we have to do in more competitive areas that are just not the cookie cutter standard. Yeah. So what you're saying is I can't just throw keywords on a website and then hopefully it just, you know, blows up and has all this traffic. Nope. Yeah. Can't just do that. And, and again, the great thing about our framework is not only just beautiful design, but also all of that back-end SEO and off-page SEO. It's almost like a dance, right? The website design is dancing with that SEO framework. And if, if one's not working, they'll trip and fall, right? But if they're both working together, it's like a beautiful dance. That's what I kind of look at it as. Yeah, that's so good. Uh, so how could a partner maybe audit their own site and, and improve it, just in a nutshell? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm actually, right now, I'm actually sharing Nelson Family Orthodontics, and I'll show a pretty cool free Chrome extension called Website SEO Checker. And if you just get this, it's, a, it's, a, it's the basic 101 SEO I tell people to look at right away because... Honestly, when I analyze and audit sites, this is the first thing I do, and I find so many sites that are just under-optimized and underperforming just at this level. And this is not even the advanced stuff. This is just the basics. So we're looking at the title of the site, the description of the site, and the headings on the site. And as you can see here, you'll notice that the title of this site is Orthodontic Office in San Marcos, CA, and then the brand, right? And the reason why this is important to look at is if you're trying to rank for specific terms within a location, for this example, San Marcos, you wanna make sure that your site is optimized at the title level, mentioning that location and the service keyword, in this case, Orthodontic Office. And then down in the description, you'll notice Right here, it says looking for a trusted orthodontist in San Marcos. Again, it's optimized for location and treatment level, right? And then we come down to headings. And we also want to make sure as we're going through headings, something to look at. Are all of your headings filled out? Do you have an H1? Do you have an H2? You definitely want to have some brand mentions in there, but also just specific things as far as it comes to treatment. Are you mentioning orthodontist again? Are you mentioning braces, Invisalign, as you can see through these headings? So it's really look at those key things. This is a free Chrome extension that you could download. Look at your site and go through each page. It's not just your home page. Uh, another important area is actually your service pages, and we'll just dive quickly into that. We'll go over to the Invisalign page, and we'll open up that tool again. 
So boom, right here, you'll notice title, Invisalign in San Marcos, CA, kids, teens, adults. And what we're capturing here is we're letting the search engine know that we have an optimized page that we want to rank for when someone's typing in anything that is relevant with Invisalign in San Marcos area, and whether that's for kids, teens, or adults. And then also mentioning specific things as far as Invisalign in San Marcos in that description. You'll notice our H1 or header 1, Invisalign in San Marcos for kids, teens, adults. There's a pattern here, right? But this is what works. This is 101, right? And then we take more advanced stuff as far as optimizing images, building out beautiful location pages. I could share that real quick right here as well. This is really an advanced tactic, but it is good just to share and understand that when you're really building out content a specific way and optimizing it a very specific way, it's so much more powerful. And we, we do a great job at this. Again, design elements are, are key here as well. And call to actions, you see these buttons, free consult, right? They're placed in a specific place for a reason, but we're also getting optimization at a specific level. Google map embed, name, address, phone number, hours. And then as we're going down, you're going to see a robust amount of content and headers that are optimized specifically for a reason, optimized images, and then also internal linking. Look at your site. If you're not seeing a bunch of internal links, that's another key thing that you're probably not fully optimized. You want internal links from other pages that go to additional pages on your site just to build relevancy. But again, there's specific things that we do that are just really advanced when it comes to on-page and then advanced stuff that are, are off-page. And I always encourage, if you are an orthodontist or a dental practice, uh, I'm all ears. You know, I, I will take a look at your site for you. Again, you could use that free tool, but if you have any questions, I, I'm, I'm willing to look at it for you, audit your site, and show you a couple things that probably would advance your SEO game. Yeah, and James, you've been in this industry a long time, you know, SEO. And so with that said, you've actually worked with a number of different industries at one time. Yep. So you've done SEO for multiple companies. I'm talking across multiple verticals from, you know, construction to maybe healthcare to, I mean, you name it, you've probably Private done SEO. Yep. <laughs> so now compare that to now what we're doing here with HIP, where we have um, niched down into just orthodontics, the dental space, you know, obviously there's an advantage to that. So this is probably a self-explanatory question, but to hear it from an SEO expert, why is that so important to come to somebody who knows you so well? Yep. It, it, and it comes back very similar to our design framework. Why is it so powerful is because hundreds of sites you get to see and build the process and system better and better. Same thing when it comes to SEO. When we're analyzing data for a specific niche, we start to see trends. We start to understand what works, what doesn't work. So we can cut out what doesn't work and really focus on what's really going to be effective. We can see what keywords are actually going to make a difference. What pages are we optimizing a specific way? And these are hundreds of sites that we get to analyze, look at data from, and then hundreds and hundreds of Google My Business listings, which is so important because everyone has a phone these days, and they're opening their phone. And if I was to ask, hey, when's the last time you actually looked at Google or searched something? You'd probably say within the last 24 hours, you probably use Google to search something, whether it's a restaurant or something near you or anything. People are using it, and it's very important that your Google business is optimized because people are going to land on that. They are going to read your reviews, and that's part of an SEO process as well, your reputation, right? So all of these elements really are important to understand. And when we're able to analyze hundreds of data across orthodontic and dental websites and Google business listings, we start to understand what works. Yeah, exactly. And what's really cool about that too, is that, you know, we've been inside of orthodontic practices and dental practices, and we care about the whole practice from a 360 standpoint. So not only do we offer web and SEO, but we offer an entire framework of services because we can actually service an entire practice, including even leadership inside the practice, you know, consulting with the practice. Um, so web and SEO is just one side of our conversation. Obviously, that's the conversation we're having now. But when it comes to HIP, I mean, our entire framework um, is so powerful because we actually know what happens inside the practice. We are not the orthodontist, of course, like I can't put on braces. But when we walk into a practice, we can help a practice grow in other areas as well. So 
we do focus on orthodontists and dentists, um, of course, with web and SEO as y- yours and my expertise. But when it comes to knowing your vertical so well, that's where there's more power too. You know, you, you focus on one thing and it's that principle, right? That it's almost like the Pareto principle where you, you know, 20% focus on the 20% that's going to bring 80% of the results. Well, if you're focusing on everything, you're not focusing on you know, anything. Right. So we just decided that that was the best approach. And, you know, it's one of those things where we've had some great partners and we still have great partners and we've um, partnered up in different ways with resources and conferences, and we've gained, you know, wisdom from different organizations. And so, you know, when you can focus solely on one um, industry, that's where you can really become an expert. You know, um, I think of Navy SEALs, like they, they learn specific ways to do certain things and certain things. Well, they're, they're, they're great at a lot of things, but they're specialized and they're called upon when you need a special group of people to do a special mission. And so I think about that as what we do, we're called upon to do a special mission. When an orthodontist knows they need orthodontic marketing, they hear hip and hopefully they think, wow, these guys are the experts and that's who I need to do it. Hey, did you enjoy this video? Click right here for another great video for orthodontist and dentist. We hope to see you there.